Los Angeles. It's the Tom Lucky Show. And now, here he is, Tom Lucky. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Lucky Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. This article from the Detroit Free Press was sent in by one of the freaks who listens to us overnight on the radio in Detroit. We appreciate all you freaks, by the way, all of you. Listen to this story. Their affair began on a private jet, taking them to lunch in Lake Tahoe. She was a 22-year-old senior at the University of Michigan, visiting Palm Springs, California. He was 49, twice divorced, and a multimillionaire. On Monday, the end of a nearly 20-year relationship between Margaret Horvath and William Hubner began to play out inside an Oakland County courtroom before Oakland County Circuit Judge Nancy Grant and a jury of eight. Horvath, now 42 and living in Birmingham, Michigan, broke up with Hubner in December 2000. Now she is suing him for breach of contract. Now understand, she broke up with him. She broke up with him, okay? You heard that part of the story. She broke up with him. And now she was suing him for breach of contract, saying he promised her a lifetime of luxury. It will be up to the jury to decide whether she is entitled to anywhere from $27 million to $160 million! to maintain the life to which she has become accustomed as Hubner's lover. She is also asking for a Birmingham condominium at a new Lexus LS400. They're not making those anymore. They're 430s now. Hubner, 69, with homes in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and Beverly Hills, California, said he promised her nothing. Hubner is the owner of the Fitness USA chain of athletic clubs. Horvath, a tall, thin blonde, took the stand briefly on Monday. She explained her infatuation with Hubner in the early days of their relationship. He asked me lots of questions about myself, said Horvath, who now works as a receptionist for a Southfield-based architectural and engineering firm. He was dazzling to me. I was interested. Not long after the pair met in the summer of 1983, Hubner asked Horvath to move to California and live with him, she said. But she declined and returned to the University of Michigan, where she graduated with degrees in English and political science. Horvath continued to write to Hubner, who disregarded her letters until the spring of 1984, when he invited her again to move in with him. She accepted and began working as his personal assistant, travel agent, and cook. How much is that worth? Well, let's see. A personal assistant? You can get a personal assistant. In Los Angeles, you can get one for 40000 a year. I'll bet in um, Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, I'll bet you could probably get one for 28 30 32 Cook? I would generously say 40000 a year. Travel agent? Well, I mean, really, how much talent does it take to log on to Expedia and book a couple of plane tickets? Says here, after two years together, yeah, she was his travel agent. After two years together, Horvath began to press Hubner, whom she considered her boyfriend, about marriage. But he told her he would never marry again and did not want any more children. Instead, Hubner promised to pay her living and travel expenses and care for her parents, said Horvath's attorney David Mendelssohn. He extended his hand and said, let's shake on it, said Mendelssohn, of a conversation between his client and Hubner. He said, my word is my bond. 
Bill Hampton, by the way, she broke up with him. I mean, um, looks like Mr. Hubner was promised a lifetime of something else in exchange for paying for all this. And then she broke up with him, so he stopped paying, and now he breached his contract. Mm -hmm. Says here, but Bill Hampton, Hubner's attorney, told the jury that his client promised nothing. In fact, Hubner always told Horvath, quote, nothing lasts forever. She enjoyed the life of a queen, Hampton said of Horvath. She lived well and came out of the relationship with far more than when she started. And the beat goes on. All right. Now, we don't know all of the particulars in this case, except we do know that she broke up with him, and now she wants him to keep supporting her even after she broke up with him. What in the world makes a woman think she's entitled to one dime? Because, you see, what he's getting, what he's paying for everything, is he's getting laid. Right? This is a woman who is 27 years younger than him. And he's paying all her expenses and caring for her mother, and each day she's getting laid by a younger, presumably hotter chick than a guy that age could normally expect to get. So she breaks up with him. As far as I'm concerned, the arrangement is over. But not in her case. And by the way, and I, I want to broaden this out for all you broads out there. I want to broaden this out a little bit to ask you the following question. You know, you've heard about these palimony cases in which two people who are not married end up in court because she says he owes me money because we live together as if we were married. And people actually seriously entertain this stuff to the point where there are now not only prenups. There are now pre-relationship agreements that you're supposed to have signed before somebody moves in with you. Do you know about this? There are now prenups for people who are not having nups. People who are not getting married. Now, I, I have a divorce attorney who told me if I move in with anybody to make sure I call him about a pre-relationship agreement before I let anybody move in because they could make claims even though we're not married. Why? Why should anybody expect to get money after a relationship is over and the people are not even married? I mean, we're not talking about child support here. We're talking about, like, the equivalent of vagina money. Why? 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 Can, can you tell me? Do women deserve money? Like, if you live with a chick and it goes for a couple of years and then you decide it's not working out and you say, hey, nice knowing you, should she be able to come back at you for money? Why? It doesn't make any sense. What we, we're, we're in such denial in this society. You know, when we're paying your expenses, it's so that we can get you to sleep in our bed every night and ride us like a pony. We don't do that because we're nice guys or because we want to become your local office of the welfare department. We do it because we're getting something in return. And when we stop getting that, why should we continue paying for it? Does it make sense that somebody you live with should be able to come back at you and ask you for money later on? Again, accepting child support, which is a whole separate issue. You'd have to pay child support whether you live with somebody or not. If, you, if they, they got knocked up, you got to pay. That's the law. We're not talking about child support. We're talking about the equivalent of alimony. Some people call it palimony, whatever. Do, do, do you think that that concept makes any sense at all? Tom, 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 Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred. I think you're brilliant. I enjoy liking you, and I enjoy hating you. The Tom Like a Show on Like a Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Jared on the Tom Like a Show. Hello, Tom. Jared. First of all, I have to say that you're the man. Thank you. Second of all, how's it I... feel losing all that weight? And how many times do you hear that joke in a day? <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> but this palimony, absolutely ridiculous. How does it make it a court? Uh, because uh, uh, judges and politicians are generally pussies, and uh, they allow this to go on. I mean, it's outrageous. It is. Oh, what, what is marriage anymore if a woman doesn't have to get married to get her hands on your bank account? It makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. No. The law, it's like the law doesn't have any meaning any, anymore. And, and we live in a society 
that, that's just pathetic. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that I'm an American. Uh huh. And I'll, who would you tell me? Tell me who to vote for, Tom. Well, I know I, you don't. I know you don't like to like to bring up politics, but I need to know. I'm voting for John Kerry. Then I'm voting for John Kerry. That's who I'm voting for. And by the way, I don't like him, <laughs> but I right. really don't like George W. Bush. Oh God. I, I almost left the country, almost almost moved to France. Actually, I have friends that left the country since he became the president. Now, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, what's going on with the FCC now, I think everybody has to make a statement. I agree with Howard Stern. I'm voting for John Kerry. That's it. I agree. Well, thank you, Tom. Uh, blow me up. Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Sarah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Pretty good, Sarah. I just wanted to give my two cents in about that palimony. Yeah. I think for women to expect men to give them something is cheap and weak. Well, that's how women Um, usually are, whether they're in court or not. They expect us to give them something. Well, I'm married, and basically my money is my money. My husband's money is his money. We have a great relationship that way. I don't expect anything from him. If he gives me a present, that's fine. You say that now, but what did you find him in bed with uh, somebody he works with? Then that that sucks. We will get divorced, but I don't want anything. Really? Well, that's uh, unusual because most women will try to get their pound of flesh. I can take care of myself. I don't need him. Because we wanted 105 pounds of flesh. The only thing I understand is maybe if you get alimony for a child, but that's it. And I don't have any children specifically for that reason because I feel that we need to stay married long enough to make sure it's going to work first, and then maybe have children. Right. We've talked about divorce before, and if it happens, it happens, but I don't expect anything from him. Mm-hmm. I don't think other women should either, because right. they should be able to take care of themselves. Yep, I agree with you. But I just think that other women that do expect that should rethink their lives and get a job. I and agree with you. I, I agree with you. Uh, for God's sake, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, or get an agreement in writing or something. But I can't believe that uh, somebody would uh, be able to go to court and say, you know what, even though I'm not servicing you anymore, I deserve to have you support me for the rest of my life. It's unbelievable. Larry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, king among men. Thank you. Honor to talk to you. It is. Anyway, uh, you know, yeah, usually palimony is um, kind of crazy, but there are certain really, really rare cases where it kind of makes sense. There are no cases where it makes well, sense. Well, hold on. I'm going to tell you why, and then you can respond. Okay. Here's why there are no cases where it makes sense. You see, what people used to do before palimony is this. If you were dating a woman or she moved in with you, mm-hmm. uh, she would try to pressure you to marry her. Right. If you didn't, she either, A, wouldn't move in with you, or, B, moved out of your house. Well, that's, that's it. True. Yeah. That's it. And that, that's what, see, that's what marriage is supposed to be for. You're right. So if there is no contract, I'm sorry. You know, but you get these Hollywood types that, that they're, they're a little weird. and um, Nobody forces anybody well, to be in a relationship with anybody. You're right. But, you know, there, there are cases where, um, you know, you get somebody, they've been living with them for 25 years. They're not married. Uh, you know, Whose fault is that? They have kids together. But whose fault? Well, child support, uh, like I said, Jagger, child support like is a Jagger separate Jagger issue. And, well, like Mick Jagger and uh, Jerry Hall. What about? Well, they've been together for, for you know, God knows how long. And uh, they had kids together. And uh, he's paying her uh, palimony. But why should he pay her palimony? I mean, can you imagine what the child support alone is if you're Mick Jagger? Astronomical. Yeah, so why should he also pay and palimony? Way, the Brazilian girl he left her for, very good looking. Well, of course, but the point is, why should he also pay palimony? If he's paying her hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in child support, why should he also pay on top of that? Because the way the court system interprets it... uh... The court system shouldn't be interpreting this stuff. There should be laws. It should be spelled out. You should not be able to go to court over something like this. I I agree with you. I mean, you know, the article that you wrote, uh, read at the beginning is, is kind of absurd. I mean, but, if I'm with a chick and, and I'm paying her expenses, heaven forbid, I'm paying her expenses, right. and then she breaks up with me, Yeah. how dare she come back and say, oh, and by the way, I want you to support me for the rest of my life. Guess what? If you do that in New York, in New York City or New York State for, uh, for a year, uh, you're paying palimony. 
Well, uh, it's but, wrong. Uh, it's so wrong. That why? Bob, what? 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 What is marriage? Why even get married? Well, I don't know. There, but there are. A and this is a, a, another. I here is here are I powerful. Here are powerful reasons for men not to move in with women. Powerful reasons. Right. But I preface. Don't it ever saying, let her move into your place. And Tom, I agree with you. But I prefaced it by saying there are very rare cases. There are no cases where where it makes sense. There are no cases. It doesn't make sense. You haven't made a case. What I'm saying... The fact that Jerry Hall lived with Mick Jagger makes a case? He's well, paying her hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in child support, but but he owes her on top of that? Why Why does she need even more money? It doesn't make any sense. That's a relationship that's akin to marriage. He supported it's her... It's not life. akin to marriage. Marriage is a contract. I, I that's agree. like, I, I have a contract to do this show. But now, now wait a minute. If I If suddenly, the day after the contract is up, I'm coming in here to work... What, no, am I going to go and say, hey, even though my contract is up, I want to continue to get paid? You know, um, if you move in together... You know, I've come to expect a certain lifestyle. You know, I when I'm doing a radio show, I come to expect a certain lifestyle. I get front row seats for sporting events. I go to concerts. I get great tables at restaurants. And I've got all this money. I can travel around the world. You know what? I've become accustomed to this lifestyle. So I say at the end of my contract here, if they tell me not to come to work anymore, I think they should keep paying me for the rest of my life. And you know that's absurd. I know it's absurd. But, but uh, it, it's exactly what you're proposing for relationships. No, I'm not. I'm yes, you are. There are a couple of cases where it makes some But sense. in the Jerry Hall and Mick Jagger case, it doesn't make any sense. That's exactly the kind of case where it doesn't make sense. Why? He's paying her hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Probably more than that. But, uh, fine. So why should he then on top of that be paying alimony? Well, you know what? Palimony. They lived in a relationship. I don't that care. You didn't, that doesn't tell me why she's entitled to the money. The fact that they were in a relationship. Tell, why? Why did he support her? You know, no, no, no. Why does he owe it to her to support her now? Um, because, I don't know. Just you see, you don't have an answer. You don't make a case. You just keep repeating the same nonsense over and over. You don't have an answer. It doesn't make any sense for him to support her. Hey, he, by the way, he was getting all kinds of services before he's not getting now. Uh, why, why should he pay? Yeah, I mean... I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the palimony thing is, is crazy, but... But, but the point is, you, so you're another pussy male like so many of them. You don't even have an answer. You just think it's fair because women just come to expect us to keep paying and paying and paying. You don't even have a reason. It's just that's the way it is. That's your answer. No, because when... when um, uh, you tell me why Mick Jagger should pay money on top of child support to Jerry Hall. When a mo woman moves in with a man... Uh, and, and they why does she have a Why does she have a right to expect to be paid years. after she's and gone? They give up their, you know, their lives to have. I'm sorry, their professional careers to have um, to have um, kids to to do homemaking stuff. Um, by the way, I don't have any evidence other than your word that Mick Jagger's paying palimony to Jerry Hall. I might add. In fact, I thought they were married. That's beside the point. Anyway, Larry, I'm out of time. Thanks for the call. It's the Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number, Yvette, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Yvette. I'm a little bit nervous because I'm talking to you. As well you should be, darling. <laughs> hey, Tom, I have a comment about what Larry said and kind of a question to follow it up. Yeah. So, and I agree with you. Almost 100%. And I think palimony is ridiculous for the same reasons that alimony is ridiculous. But my situation is a little bit different, and I'm wondering what your opinion is on uh -huh. it. So I've been with my boyfriend for five years. We've been living together for four. And mm. after one year of living together, we purchased a home. Right. I see that the thing is that I have really bad credit, but I have a good job. And he has excellent credit and makes about the same money that I do. So together we make a little over 60000 a year, which... As you can see, singly doesn't leave you very much, you know, with single income. So double income makes a lot of sense for us. Um, but I got a settlement of $30,000 that I gave directly to him because I felt that that was something that, you know, I mean, it was our family and, you know, it was my contribution to the house. Um, but if, if we were to break up then because the house and everything is in his name, then I'd be pretty much screwed out of, out of my $30,000. Well, then you should have an agreement uh, that uh, states all of this. 
And by the way, if you want to make a, a written agreement, I don't object to it. What I object to is when there's no contract and people are going into court and suing anyway. I, I agree with you there. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, what, what does marriage mean? I mean, it devalues and cheapens marriage for the people who do get married. You know, that's really true, and I totally agree with that. And the reason that we don't get married is because I have two kids and I actually get a bigger tax write-off than I would if we were married. Yeah, but the, uh, again, so so then have an agreement. Spell it out. Why do you object? Why do you object to that idea? What's that? Why do you object to the idea of having a contract? Oh, I don't really object to it. Well, why don't you have one? He's a good Tom Likas boy, and he absolutely would, he absolutely would not make a contract with me because. Well, here's the thing: if he were a good Tom Likas student, he would not buy a house with you. I know, and he would not be with me because I'm a single mom. I know. Right, so he's not as much of a student as you think. <laughs> well, that. He may be a listener, but he's certainly not a student. Well, I hear you there. That's probably true. But, you know, the, the thing is about having an agreement is how do you make it even then? I mean, when you're talking about a 200 and some thousand dollar home, and then you're talking, you know, his equity and my 30. Whose fault that is it that you've got lousy credit, may I ask? I'm sorry? Whose fault is it that you've got lousy credit? It's totally mine. Right. I was young and never did grow up. Well, that's my point. It's like. You know, th this all in yours to your benefit. You think it does? Of course it does. No. You couldn't buy a house on you couldn't buy a house on your own. You're buying a house because you've got kids. They're your kids, not his. Right. With your salary, you couldn't afford a house even if you had good credit. Right, and vice versa for him. He couldn't afford the house that we have and the land that yeah, we have. Yeah, but the have. point is, he has. He, yeah, he could probably buy something a little smaller. He could, well, he could and he wouldn't need home. something, and he wouldn't need something this big because he doesn't have any kids. Well, it's not so much the house; it's the property. I mean, we have whatever. He wouldn't need he wouldn't need space for your kids to run around if they weren't there. That's, this so is all for you. Huh. All right. Well, I mean, I, I I I guess if you look at it that way, I hadn't really looked at it that way. Well, no, no woman ever does. Women think they're just entitled to this stuff. I'm not feeling entitled at all because I feel like I've definitely contributed. You know, I mean, thirty thousand is nothing to really sneeze at, and that's cash money straight. Thirty thousand out of how much? Oh, that was the entire settlement. Yeah, but how much is, is the house? Two forty-five. Two forty-five. Yeah. So that's less than one eighth the cost of the house you contributed. It, it is, but but I also, I mean, I've lived there for three years, and I do pay, you know, the mortgage and all that too. You pay half the mortgage. Well, it's hard to say. What pays half and what? Because all my checks are directly deposited. Into Guaranteed, you don't pay half, darling, because you're also paying for your kids, which he's also paying for. Right, right. So I mean, it kind of. I mean, I guess the way that I look at it is, my thirty thousand is kind of, kind of, sort of paying him for. Like, Point is, when you're done, he's. You see, he's helping you now. When your relationship is done, why does he owe you money? He wouldn't owe me money except for my thirty thousand dollars that I right. gave him. Oh, well, fine. Yeah, and uh, but by the way, you should have an. I, I wouldn't just hand over money like that without an agreement. You're probably right. You know, because the, the thing that I was thinking of is is that you know that thirty thousand dollars. If I were to use that, you know, to clean up my credit, it would also clean up my credit and give me a nest egg. But instead of doing that, I give it directly to our household. Wow. Which is probably really stupid, too. And by the way, yeah, whose credit is being helped by him paying that mortgage every month? His. Well, it's not mine. Yeah, it's not mine. And that's what I'm saying. It's his. Right. Uh, but the thing is, you two should have had a contract. Right. Well, right now, it just kind of looks like a win-win. Mm-hmm. And by the way, no matter who's paying the mortgage, he could have put your name on the deed. Even if I have really lousy credit? On the deed, dear. Not on the mortgage. On the loan. Oh, on the deed. Mm-hmm. So maybe he's more of a like a student than you think. Yeah, he probably is. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tom. Because I, I wouldn't put your name on the deed, I'll tell you that. You with your lousy credit, and the later on, when I get sick of being around your little crumb crunchers, your little rug rats, and I uh, I want to boot your ass out. They're older, and he does get a every day. <laughs> really? He's a pretty happy guy. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? There's younger, hotter chicks who will do the same thing. That's true. And as That's he true. moves so, up the salary scale, you know what? He'll uh, have desires. You think it would be more than in, like, my best interest than to probably put some kind of an agreement going on? Well, it would be. And I think so. Because, you know what, when we break up, that's when we're on our worst terms, aren't we? Right, right yeah. I mean, no, you're on great terms now. 
Well, see, and the thing is, is that I love him because he is a very wonderful person. He's a decent. We're human all wonderful really persons until him. we're all wonderful until you want to break up with us. Until we want to break up with you, then we're not wonderful anymore. Well, that's true. Well, see, the thing that I worry about is honestly is screwing him over in any way. You know, with my credit being so bad, I didn't want my name on anything because I didn't want it to impact. You know, his credit and that sort well, of thing. Well, you know what I do in a situation like that? I hire an attorney for an hour, and I sit down and go, how can we structure this? Yeah. But you obviously wanted to save a few bucks and didn't think ahead, so you just plowed ahead and did something without the advice of an attorney. Well, that's true. I didn't even consider getting an attorney. Uh, I tell everybody, I've never lost one penny hiring a good attorney. I've always right. made money. Always. But people, that's one of the things that people cheap out on. They should cheap out on shoes and purses and go for attorneys because uh, it's much more profitable. Well, that's true. You're right. Well, give me some things to think about there. There you go. All right. Well, thanks, Tom. I, I, you tell your boyfriend he can uh, thank me. Just uh, send a check to me and thank me for all this wonderful <laughs> advice I gave you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. You have got to be like the lowest rung on the evolutionary ladder I've heard in a long time. Really? Yeah. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Michaela on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Hey. Um, you were looking for a reason for palimony and alimony. I got one decent answer for you, and all in all, I don't agree with it. But when there's kids involved and they are paying alimony, and I've known this to happen a couple of times, where all of a sudden the ex now wants the wife to stay home, she's not allowed to get a job, and they want them to stay home with the kids. And, you know, what a, not allowed. Why would anyone get involved with such a controlling individual? Oh, I don't know. And who's, and by the way, whose fault is that? And why should the man pay? You know what? If somebody says, you're not allowed to get a job, how about you leave? Well, no, and that's the whole point. It's, it's at the end of the relationship. The relationship's over. It's done. The divorce is in place. And they're saying, okay, this is how but much... it doesn't matter if he says you're not allowed to work. He can't stop you. Well, no, I mean, if you're talking about split custody and everything else, yeah, that comes up all the time. You don't have kids. You haven't seen the, you know, the child support hearings and, you know, the custody hearings and all that. I've seen it in action. What and does that have to do with this? A, a man ca it doesn't matter if a man says you're not allowed to work. It doesn't matter because you are allowed to work, and there's nothing okay. he can do to stop you. If they see that, then fine. Then at that point is when they're liable to pay. And they shouldn't the have problem. to. You know what? It shouldn't matter if the man says that because you don't have to listen. No, it doesn't matter. But if somebody, we, 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 as, as, as an attorney once said to me, son, we outlawed slavery in 1865. That's what he said. Just because somebody says you're not allowed to do something doesn't mean you're not allowed to do it. It doesn't matter. It's an agreeable option. If the oh, so in other you know, words, you agreed to it. That, so that's not being told you're not allowed. No, but that's giving you the reason for the alimony or the alimony. But, that's the point. The, that's what but it's, like but it's not a legitimate reason. Because that's your paycheck. But it is not a legitimate reason. Of nobody for, nobody can force you to do that. No, at that point, you are agreeing to stay home and take care of the kids. At that point, you are saying, okay, I am not going to go out and I'm not going to continue my career. I am not going to be pulling in a wage to support my home. Well, you know, in most that cases, point, when you break no, up with somebody, you are point. going to be going to work. So why should you be getting alimony? That's the whole point. You are asking for a reason for the alimony or the palimony. But you That's will be. You don't understand. If I'm paying you not to work and I divorce you, mm -hmm. th then you're going to get a job. When you get a job, why should I pay you anything? Every month. Why would I do that? What? If, if you're paying me Well, the thing month, is, I, I'm not going to pay you as much as a job, no matter how much I make. Unless, unless I'm like uh, a Bill support, Gates. Sure. No, on top of child support, sure. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a couple hundred bucks per kid. And by the way, and by the way, uh, uh, if, uh, we're not even talking about marriage. We're talking about people who are not married. Doesn't They're matter. not married. You yes, it does matter. You are one to say it doesn't matter. It does matter. It does matter. It does matter. If, if you want to, to make deals like that with people, get married. Oh, but otherwise, why should anybody get married? What does marriage mean anymore? If you as a woman get the same benefits of not being married as, as if you are married, why would any man get married? You're saying that the situation is the same. If two people decide to live together and have children for 10, 15 years, whether or not that piece of paper... That should be... A, a, should, yes, getting married makes all the difference. Yes, yes, that's what marriage is. That's the purpose of marriage. 
You're right. And if, if a man won't marry you, you shouldn't be having kids with him and living with him. You shouldn't be doing it. That's still justifying If reality. you do it, you shouldn't be rewarded for it. It's not a reward. It is a reward. It is a benefit. It is, a, it is an entitlement. You are not entitled to anything. If you want that benefit, you should have to get married to get it. It doesn't matter. Well, yeah, well, then, but then why, then why should anybody get married? That's the age-old question. No, well, yeah, and obviously you don't have an answer, do you? Tom, like it. Tom, like it. 800, 800, Tom, Tom, Tom. People fantasize about 14 and 15 and 16-year-old girls all the time. What are you going to do? Put them all in prison? Put everybody up to a lie detector test? Ask people if they fantasize about the girl across the street when she wears a thong bikini? You're going to put these people in prison? What are you talking about? But where do you draw the line? Yeah, I drew the line for you, you idiot. Idiot, get off the phone. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Rico on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? All right, Rico. Uh, it's kind of scary, isn't it? Uh, anything you do anymore, they're coming after you for, full, for more and more well, money. I keep, uh, you know, again, here's more evidence of why men should not let women move in. Don't let them move in. I agree. I'm, Unless uh, you are marrying them, don't let them move in. It's uh, anymore. Well, I'm, I'm divorced myself, and it's just because I'm a guy. I got uh, I got the shaft. That's for sure. A buddy of mine got divorced, and he tried to bring evidence in of a picture of his ex-wife and his her oldest daughter from a previous uh, relationship smoking marijuana. Right. Big picture, and the judge wouldn't allow it to come in. So it was no big deal. And this is a 16-year-old girl she's out there smoking pot with. So, I mean, it's, you do it on your own time, it's fine. But when you're doing it uh, with your kid, I mean, come on, when do you draw the line? And uh, hey, it's scary because uh, you've got no rights. There are all no rights. Women get what they want. That, that's exactly right. Which is why you shouldn't have one move into your place. Well, yeah, I agree, unless you plan on a long-time relationship. And even then, you got No, no, unless you're going to marry her. Exactly. That's what, that's what I meant. But because I now women want the same rights whether you're married to them or not. Living with them doesn't get you out of the responsibilities anymore. No, it just gets you more into the responsibilities. Why do you need to live with abroad? It makes no sense. Oh, I agree. There's no reason to live with them. My gonna marry them. God, are we that dependent and desperate as men? We need someone to sleep next to at night. We need mommy sleeping next to us in bed because we're afraid of the dark. Why? Right. I like the last caller that gave her live-in boyfriend thirty thousand dollars. Uh, maybe I'll look up with her for a night or two. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense at all. And I, I and I keep telling guys, don't move in. Don't do it. Hey got to find out one way or the other, and obviously it's going to be the hard way. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> All right. Have a good day. You too, Rico. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, this is Annette on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Annette. How are you? Do you care? Huh? Never mind. Am I what? Oh, please. Go, just go ahead. Um, I have to ask you something. I just started listening to you recently, so I'm sort of don't know a whole lot about you. Have you ever been married? <laughs> Why, yes. I'm because I'm just curious uh, because of where your opinions were coming from. From experience. From experience, yes. You were married. Yes. For a long time. Yes, one of the times. Yes. So you're a burnt man. Uh, most men have been burnt by women. Uh, do you don't think women get burnt by men? We don't care. The men don't care whether you've been burnt by us. Obviously, that's probably why right do we care? You sound job. like a bitter old bag yourself. I'm not bitter at all. I have a very good life. Mm -hmm. I, you know. Have yeah. What's your husband's name, dear? Um, Jim. Yeah, and you're married to him and living with him right now. No, I was married for 18 years. So, in other words, you don't have a husband, darling. No, but I have a boyfriend. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, but uh, does he live with you and pay all your expenses? No, I pay my own way, thank you. Good. That's probably because you can't get a man to pay your way. But but yet, when my daughter, my Att youngest daughter... Really hot, attractive, appealing women get men to pay for everything. So when you tell me you pay for everything yourself, that tells me everything I need to know. Well, let me tell you, Tom. I can send you a picture of myself. I'm five foot four, 120 pounds, and I am very attractive. Says Go you. there. Says you. 
call up my boyfriend. I'll give you a cell phone number. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah. where is he now? Um, he's on a business trip. Probably banging some other broad. I don't think so. Yeah, I know you don't think so, dear. You'll find out the hard way. Well, whatever. I, how, how's business? Is business good for him? It's doing okay. Yeah, well, the more money he makes, the hotter, younger chicks he's able to get. He does okay for himself. Yeah, well, you know what? There's a trophy wife out there. She's uh, probably about 22, 23 right about now. And what are they going to bring you, Tom, in life? What are they going to give you? Empty <laughs> conversations? Uh, well, believe me, I just want them to shut up and do me. They're, obviously, that's all you care about, and that's all you That's right. Care. That's all most men care about, sweetheart. Get with the program. Well, let me tell you something. When I was married to my husband, guess what? He was never interested in sex, Tom. Uh, yeah, because he sense. was, uh, you know why? Because he was married to you. You had to listen to that mouth, you bitter old broad. Thanks so much for making my day, you bitch. Tom Likas Show.